Welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. Keith Giffen Week continues. Keith Giffen Week. Every week, all week, this one week, we're doing Keith Giffen. Now, let me tell you something about Keith Giffen. People say, how are you going to do Keith Giffen Week and not talk about Trencher? How are you going to tell me about Keith Giffen and not do Trencher? Well, guess what? We're going to do Trencher, okay? Image Comics, Trencher, this is it. This is the wildest he's done, art-wise. This is the funnest, just balls-to-the-wall, fun story that he does. And we cannot do Keith Giffen Week without talking about Trencher. Now, people might also ask me, what is this book you hold in your hand, Andres? Well, to show my dedication to all things Keith Giffen, I made this hardbound book compiled of all the quarter bin issues <laughs> because his issues usually do not worth mine but okay we won't go there i got all the issues that are heckler lobo trencher and vexed put them all here okay in this wonderful book so if i flip over here to trencher blot it out we've got the trencher issues so we're going to talk about trencher it is produced um, Image Comics 1993. It is, uh, you know, after the explosion of Image and Keith Gibbs like, hey guys, I make comics. I actually have been doing comics for decades. Throw me in on this self-publishing type of deal. Give me some of that love. So he does Trencher and the art style is very unique, different. He leaves the Jose Munoz style behind that European style that he was doing with like the ambush bug and, and things like, and heckler things like that and now he's just going batshit crazy with with something very unique and I've not been able to find someone that does something similar to this it's pretty out there uh, it's a colorist nightmare is what it is uh, and I just reread it last night so let's go ahead and talk about Trencher from Keith Giffen here on Giffen Week let's do it come on Okay, boys and girls, we're doing Keith Giffen right here. So, uh, this is my little signed copy I got from him, uh, issue number one, and it was four issues. And then there was some issues here um, after the the three, the four trencher issues that he did for Image as well. The Shadows of of Shadow, excuse me, Images of Shadowhawk. So images of Shadowhawk were basically Trencher versus Shadowhawk, and it's still the same style. Uh, you'll notice it's kind of the glossy paper and the coloring's different, which I don't think is as good as when it's uh, the flats, but uh, it's still some more of uh, Trencher, so we can continue talking about that in the same sentence. But actually, you know, before we talk about Trencher, why don't we just go back a little bit and talk about some Lobo. Because Lobo, he actually kind of starts this style with this uh, Lobo Infanticide uh, miniseries that he did with, I think it's uh, Alan Grant. Yeah, Alan Grant is the writer. So um, he kind of starts this different style of art. And I think I'm going to totally make this up. But I believe it's because, you know, Beasley was so well known and regarded for the Lobo stuff that they did together with those two first miniseries. So I think when Beasley left to do, you know, Batman, uh, Judge Dredd, and some of those kind of stories, um, Keith Giffen still had more more ideas, and Lobo was hot, but without Beasley, he had to, you know, he drew it. And I think he wanted to kind of like make sure he separated himself out from the Beasley kind of style and look, and he kind of came up with this. Heavy on line work, no shadows, no other form, all form and val there's no values rather, that all form is created by, by the line, all shapes and everything. And so you can see he's got this style, which is, I'm assuming, you know, uh, rapidograph or maybe just pen of some sort, some tech pen that he's using to do all the kind of like, uh, kind of wild line work and he uses this 
for his own creative project, which is now after he did the Lobo Emphasize Trencher. So Trencher is him kind of taking the Lobo character now doing his own. Now the character Gideon uh, is a trencher, and what a trencher is is kind of like a bounty hunter, a repossessor of souls. And so the trencher, Gideon, is this one version where he inhabits this chassis, which is the body, and he goes to Earth and repossesses uh, errant souls who are, you know, doing mischievous deeds. So he's kind of like a space cyber bounty hunter type of guy, and it's it's com it's comedic, right? It's it's wild action comedy, you know, a farce. Uh, maybe it's a satire of, of, you know, everything the Lobo was, right? And just like, okay, we're just going to bump it up more. So, you know, in the first issue, he fights this guy with these nose hairs that can, like, wrangle things and do damage. But one of the, I mean, the art is really incredible. Um, you know, you might look at this originally and be like, man, this guy doesn't really know anatomy and he's just kind of going crazy. But really, all these forms these muscle groups and stuff are being shown here through the lines. And let me see if we can find a good panel of that. By the way, I love the nine panel grid that he uses. Sometimes he breaks it up with six and such. But there's a couple panels here where you really can see, you know, the different forms and muscle groups and things. And he's doing it with line work. It's just kind of like, here we go, you know. He knows the trapezius, excuse me, the trapezius here. The, the, the tricep, the bicep, deltoids, the brachioradialis, all these extenders and flexors, he, he's, he knows these muscles. I mean, you can see his work in previous incarnations. He knows anatomy. But he's doing it in this really kind of interesting style. And another thing to note is when you look at it, it's not just one line. When you look at it closely, it's actually he will double up sometimes on the line as though he's kind of going back around on it. And I found that really interesting. Like, why would he do that? Why does he go back a second time um, on some of this? So it, I really don't really understand why he did it. But it definitely makes it a little more unique. Instead of just doing a straight line here, I mean a line, he, he, he does the line and then he goes back around it again with sometimes a thinner, sometimes the same thickness. So he kind of like doubles everything. He d draws it and then he draws it again. I don't know what the hell that's about, <laughs> besides just doing a lot more work. But, um, man, now I want to try this, actually. I want to do a drawing of this. I want to do something that I've done and just draw it twice like that. It's really kind of interesting. So each, each issue is basically him fighting, like, you know, a... <clears throat> A, a villain, you know, of the week. And, and it's kind of cool. He's got like the who's who type of a thing at the back page. You know, in this issue, he's going to fight the hurler. There's this old lady, Chernobyl. Um, and that you'll notice the logo, <clears throat> the logo changed a little bit on it. Um, issue two. Great they're able to keep the colors. Um, <clears throat> you know, remember Dominion, they couldn't do that, right? Dominion, they had to go black and white because of sales. But here, um, I guess sales were good enough to keep the color, which is good. Because this is a book, if you had to read this book without colors, it would be impossible. It's just, uh, you just wouldn't be able to do it. You wouldn't be able to pull it off. It, another thing I want to talk about, the comedy, the, the, the way he's using, you know, uh, the, 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 the sound effects and visuals, you know, the arrows, the kind of comedy elements of the of the story. Um, really cool. I mean, he's like all blown to hell. Both his legs gone, one of his arms are gone. He just has a hand and he's fighting this gal, you know, and just great use of, of silhouette right there. <clears throat> I love the way his he's doing his numbering, the panels, the panels. Let's go back. I mean, these these panels are so interesting. The the framing of these things, right? So here you start off kind of normal, and then you go boom. Okay, big kind of you get that. And I like the way he draws one there. But now look at these. Look at the way that he's doing these panels. They're very kind of wild and out there, especially in the '90s. I mean, just with the little like uh, like lat latches, you know like a book latches and stuff, and then this kind of white out on the black, and just really 
experimental, I felt like, you know, really experimental uh, look at stuff. This side out, you know, just little jokes, little visual gags constantly through this whole thing. You know, this is a great one. You know, death rattle, right? You got death rattle here. You've got, you know, five stories, spam, you know, smash. Just the, the, the sound, the sound effect of him going through the guy's spine is, it sounds like that, you know? That is just really creative, fun cartooning. Um, so I find this a really, really neat project. Uh, theme, there's no real theme here. It's just a guy beating things up. The, the, there is some commentary about the industry. Every now and then you'll get like a little bit of commentary about like, you know, the, the poly bags are lame. You know, he, yeah, here, he's talking to the comic book guy and he's like, look, Read the comics, scrag the bag, okay? We, we'd better start leveling with the fans before they rise up in mass and kill us all, Foundation. You know, this whole idea of stop putting them in bags, open the bags and read the comics, you know? So there is a little bit of like political bits here he's throwing in about his like take on the industry. But for the most part, it's just this crazy romp with fun visuals and a, and a fun, exciting story, which back in the 90s is what was selling, right? Youngblood, Wildcats, all that stuff from Image, Savage Dragon especially, it was all just kind of fun romps. And so um, so he's just going with the flow with that. Uh, I love that he does a letters column, but he's actually doing a letters column with the character. I mean, he's drawing out the letters column, really cool stuff. He fights freaking Elvis. Great cover, by the way. I could have bought this cover years ago for like 150 bucks, and I'm just like, I'm so mad that I didn't do it back then. I just didn't have the money. It sucks. Um, <laughs> there's so many pieces I wish I would have had. I could have bought, I, the, almost this whole thing was up, and I could have got any of it, and I didn't. I just, it was lame. Anyway, I think the art is brilliant. I think this is his most creative, experimental story. Um, comic rather and you can find these in quarter bins all the time so if you haven't gotten these check them out they're really freaking cool the art is brilliant and that's 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 the trencher so there you go so uh we will do more here on keith giffen week thanks guys have a great day check out my patreon if you want to see what i do and what my little projects are and um subscribe to the channel Biscuit. Keep. Good.